Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. The fear of escalating violence caused a vigil to be canceled tonight. People had planned to gather for a candlelit ceremony for 56-year-old Todd Ledbetter. He was the homeless man beaten to death near Westside Park in Champaign last week. WCI 3's Jennifer Jensen has more on what the community still plans to do moving forward. Tonight was supposed to be a time to honor Todd Ledbetter's life. He was beaten to death in a suspected robbery on Thursday. Police found his body at a bench across from Westside Park on State Street. Nobody has been arrested yet. One man who knew Ledbetter says he hopes people recognize that his life mattered. Well, these are people. It could happen to you. You could lose your job. You could get divorced. You're husband or wife could die, a family member could die, and you could have a bunch of string of bad things happen all at once, and then, you know, that's you. And uh, at the end of the day, we're all human, and uh, sometimes we all need a little help. Although this vigil was canceled, a memorial ceremony is planned to happen at the Phoenix Drop-In Center on Wednesday night. All of the balloons and flowers that have been dropped off at the place where he died will be transferred there. Reporting, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Police say witnesses saw three men rob and beat Ledbetter the day he was killed. Detectives are as still asking anyone with information that could help the investigation to contact them. Champaign police are investigating after two people were shot early this morning. It happened at the Microtel Inn near the corner of Blarney and Ryan Drives. Police found bullet casings inside and outside the building as well as property damage. A party was happening when shots were fired. A 21-year-old man and 23-year-old man showed up to the hospital with gunshot wounds not long after it happened. Police have not made any arrests. Another shooting that happened at that same hotel remains under investigation. It happened back on June 22nd. One man was found dead. But the coroner says the autopsy results aren't complete, so they're not saying whether it was a homicide or suicide. A man from Ludlow is in custody after surrendering to police. Justin Harden evaded cops for days. He was wanted on a warrant for attempted murder in Kentucky. When police went to arrest him a few days ago, he ran. He turned himself in today in Champaign County. He was also booked in the Ford County Jail in March. He faced five felony charges back in 2016 and didn't finish court-ordered substance abuse classes. A petition to revoke his parole is pending. Two teenagers, a 16-year-old boy and girl, had to be airlifted after a rollover crash in Champaign County. It happened around 4.15 this afternoon on 600 East, just south of Fisher. Police said one vehicle left the road and rolled in a field hitting a tree. Several people were inside and had to be removed. Many emergency vehicles were called to the scene. No word um, on any of the other injuries involved in that crash. We have an update tonight out of Decatur, a teenager who drove drunk and hit an elderly woman's home one day after getting his driver's license is facing up to 12 years in prison. Micaiah Barton pleaded guilty to aggravated DUI. The 18-year-old was driving drunk on Locust Street near 23rd Street. He hit the 87-year-old's house, which caught fire. She died inside. Decatur police arrested a man for smashing windows and slashing tires downtown this weekend. Travis Stewart was booked in the Macon County Jail on more than a dozen charges. People discovered the vandalism Sunday morning at the Civic Center, Transfer Center, and Salvation Army headquarters. Crews replaced the front windows of the Civic Center this morning. One man who volunteers with the Salvation Army and works nearby says he was disheartened to see the destruction. Oh, I was very surprised. Uh, I don't know why somebody would be so careless or rude to the community that all the Salvation Army does is provide benefits for those that need it. Homeless people also told WCIA they were hurt seeing the damage to the transfer center because that building offered them shelter when other places couldn't take them in during the pandemic. It's been three months since Decatur City Council met face to face. Now they're back together with an audience thanks to phase four's guidelines. WCIA 3's Jen Lask spoke to people who showed up to be heard. Roughly 30 people showed up to the meeting, falling well within Restore Illinois' 50-person limit. Some kept masks on while others wore them just to get to their seats. Officials moved the council meeting into the Civic Center Theater to make social distancing easier. Tim Jones says he's relieved to be meeting in person again. Oh, I'm thrilled that we can come into the meeting and not do it over a Zoom uh, video chat, just because I, I like to be involved personally. He brought a mask, but says he felt comfortable with the city's setup. I feel my risk is very low. Jones hopes speaking in person against condemning his property could be more effective. Uh, I can read you better. I can look at everyone quickly. Uh, they can look at me, maybe see my emotion better. 
As for Don Carmichael, he came out to talk about an ordinance to create regulations for native prairie space around Lake Decatur, homes, and businesses. He says it's crucial the council understands prairie grass can save insect populations. I hope that I'm safe, but I'll tell you what, none of us are safe as long as we're destroying our ecosystems. Carmichael says he's willing to set aside his discomfort with crowds. I don't feel particularly comfortable being around crowds and to be honest with you I try to avoid them but uh, as I said some things can't be postponed and our collapsing ecology is one of them. All of July's meetings will be held at the Civic Center Theater. The council hasn't finalized its plans for August yet. Indicator, Jen Lask, WCIA 3, your local news leader. The council voted unanimously to condemn Smith's property, although they can still negotiate its acquisition with him. As for the prairie grass debate, the city plans to revisit that issue. Council members voted on several other issues, including plans for the city to dip into its reserves to help a restaurant extend its outdoor dining space onto public property. That narrowly passed four to three after a lengthy debate. New tonight at 10, police said part of one road in Douglas County will be closed for a few hours after it buckled. It's happening on northbound I-57 south of Arcola. Officers said the left lane is closed. It'll be closed for the next few hours while IDOT makes repairs. Also new at 10, the Hoopston JCs decided to postpone the National Sweet Corn Festival. Organizers said a large part of their decision was to postpone was based on their insurance providers not covering this year's festival. Next year's National Sweet Corn Festival is scheduled for September 2nd through the 6th. There are more than 600 new cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours in Illinois. That makes almost 148,000 in 102 counties. Six more people have died, including two in Champaign County. There were also six yesterday. That's the lowest daily death toll since March 25th. The state's positivity rate, 2.6%. The recovery rate in the state is 94%. People traveling to Chicago from out of state may be facing a two-week quarantine. The mayor there signed a public health order mandating the quarantine starting today for people arriving from 15 states. She hasn't said exactly how it'll be enforced, but fines could reach $500 a day. Chicago and Illinois have seen declines in new cases, hospitalizations, and deaths, but other parts of the country are seeing a surge in new cases. For a list of those states, you can head to our website, WCIA.com. The governor is pushing for a progressive income tax. How big of a check he recently cut to a ballot committee.